is Liam Young and I am a speculative architect. And I think what that means is that uh, I'm still operating as an architect, but I don't design or make physical buildings, but rather I tell stories about the global, urban and architectural implications of emerging technologies. I was trained as a traditional architect back in Australia. I worked for real offices. I worked for Zaha Hadid for a while. Um, and I started to see that the forces that shape cities, um, the forces that define how we interact and, and operate across space, um, started to shift from the remits that traditional architects usually had, usually had kind of con control or effect over um, to technologies and networks. So I started to look more for forms of work and practice that would engage in these shifting forces that make cities. And that meant that I started working more through time-based mediums because static buildings as objects were, were too slow and cumbersome. Um, and I started to tell stories about technology because technology became a driver in urban space and technology seemed to be arriving faster than our cultural or architectural capacity to understand what they might mean. So I started to think about forms of speculation, making films, telling stories as a means to try and preempt or get ahead of the way that technology was being thrust at us. Yeah, I mean, I think I grew up in Australia and in, in Australia, the dominant architectural narrative is one of place uh, and site. And really in many ways, when I'm engaging with technology in these terms, I'm thinking about how technology is changing place. Um, with the work of Unknown Fields, which is the research studio that I run with another architect, Kate Davies, we think about um, technology as a planetary system that creates um, a network condition where to understand a city like Los Angeles or like London, you can't just look at the single point on a map where that city is located, but you have to look at the network condition that that produces that city or that that city produces in turn. Um, technology um, has created this extraordinary condition where, you know, in order to understand the phone that you're shooting this interview on, you need to look at this map and constellation of landscapes that are involved in producing it. Um, so we think about place as a networked object in a way, um, which comes very much from, you know, an understanding of the traditional form of place that, that might be discussed in a landscape like Australia. Um, and the other side of the story is that, is that technology is changing place in terms of um, uh, how um, we operate in multiple places at any one point in time, that, that our experience of physical location and site is now conditioned by our relationship to digital media um, and an architect that trying to understand site and place now needs to engage with the full spectrum of um, mixed realities um, that are all part of our everyday lives. Um, so in many ways, it's still kind of that story about place, yeah. but through the lens of technology. Yeah, I think my, my heroes when I was um, uh, working as a student were I guess the speculative architects of the past, um, people like Archigram, Livius Woods, um, uh, or the, the genres of film and comic books that I was reading, um, because I saw that they were engaging with urban and architectural questions, but they were doing so without a formal traditional building practice. But they were still having significant effects on the culture of architecture and on the culture of how we think about cities. So, you know, I think Archigram have played a, a really critical role in shaping um, the landscape of British architectural practice, yet they did so without ever making buildings, just making magazines. So um, the way that you're able to launch stories into the world with extraordinary power and force that uh, they might find and have consequence um, uh, I thought that was really interesting and there's a long tradition of that within uh, unbuilt architectural practices. Mm. Los Angeles is a city of stories and speculation and I moved my practice here 
because they started to get more engaged with the, the entertainment industry. So although I still describe myself as an architect, I now work within the landscapes of um, film and television and virtual reality and video games. And although not much is actually still produced in LA because of tax breaks and things like that, um, all of these projects start here and pre-production, which is often where I'm involved in a project where we're building the worlds mm. of a film and designing the landscapes and spaces of the film um, still happens to a large extent in Los Angeles. So I'm here working on uh, designing imaginary worlds for film and TV. And the other part of this move here was also to set up a program here at SciArc, um, a postgraduate program that might support and help students with architecture, design or art backgrounds to make that same transition from traditional forms of architectural and design practice into the entertainment industry. So here I run this master's program and we literally help people build careers and, and do what, what I spent 10 years trying to hustle to get into position to do to, to, to speed up that transition um, so that they can use an undergraduate degree or a master's degree in architecture to legitimately go out and work in the entertainment industry, designing the landscapes of video games or virtual reality experiences or designing the imaginary worlds of, of film and TV. I think that's a really critical act that the architect can play right now. Yeah, I always try to weave these stories into my, my practice. I think when I was studying, um, uh, there wasn't really the opportunity to, or the infrastructure to support me on these endeavors. And that's really why I started this program. And I still think that it's, there isn't really a program like it anywhere in the world that, that legitimizes the, 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 the process of an architect working in these entertainment spaces. Um, uh, sometimes architects might borrow from the tools and techniques of entertainment, but they're still kind of making architecture or unbuilt projects that are still operate within the architectural discipline. What we do is totally outside of that. I'm interested in, in architects infiltrating these other industries, not just being a filmmaker in architecture, but being an architect in film. Um, and again, I don't think any other program is, is, is as serious about that transition as what we are. It's not just about making fancy and, and fun architects. It's about architects operating and like Trojan horses embedding themselves inside these other disciplines and talking about critical architectural and urban ideas. Um, and that's really important to us that, that our graduates do find traction in these spaces. And we don't use video game to talk about cities um, uh, and to do architectural projects inside game engines. We make video games that people play um, and they're encoded with architecture and urban ideas. But the idea is that um, we co-opt the mediums of popular culture to tell these kinds of stories so that we're not just within the discipline of architecture, but we're reaching you know, huge audiences that would never be possible um, through traditional architectural publications or, or platforms. And I think that if architects are really interested in um, the value of our ideas, it, it, it's our duty and responsibility to find new mediums and more public mediums to disseminate those ideas. And that's why we make films, that's why we tell stories. I mean, every now and again, there are architects and architect practices that break out of the discipline, but it's few and far between. And it, it needs to happen much more. Um, I mean, there used to be a time where, where architects were on the news and, and were public figures and intellectuals, um, and we've increasingly becoming more and more niche and in turn more and more irrelevant. Um, so uh, what we try and do is find ways that we can disseminate architectural ideas more widely. Um, and I think really that's the future of the discipline. Um, so much of our cities are not built or touched by architects in any form, so we can operate it in a different way and still find um, consequence and meaning. Um, and I think, think that's something that we all should do, and it doesn't happen enough. You know, we're really good at publishing books that only other architects buy, doing lectures that only other architects turn up at, um, doing biennales and triennales and whatever biennales. Um, 
uh, that cater for all of our friends to come to the openings and have a drink and, and party with. Um, for the most part, although the work inside these institutions are really valuable, um, uh, they run the danger of, of having very little consequence outside of the own, their own echo chamber. Um, and we're, we're, you know, we scream very loudly into the vacuum um, uh, and we should stop <laughs> and start to think more about other, other ways that we can get our work into the world. Um, I think the hardest thing has been f carving out this journey and this transition from traditional forms of architecture practice into the work that I do now. And that's why I started the, the master's program is to try and help people do that. It, you know, it took 10 years of hustling um, and there's an easier way. And, and we've tried to make a program that, that can help students make that transition. Mm.